Hello everyone, and welcome to today's Lunch and Learn. My name is Michelle Snow, and I'm patient education librarian here at Princess Margaret Cancer Centre, and I will be introducing our speaker today. The topic is on drug coverage, and our speaker is Yvonne Ta. Yvonne Ta is a medical reimbursement specialist here at Princess Margaret Cancer Centre. Yvonne graduated from U of T with a Bachelor of Science, and she started working at Princess Margaret Hospital Outpatient Pharmacy in 2000. And then she moved to Clinical Trials Pharmacy in 2005, and she has been the Medical Reimbursement Specialist since 2010. Yvonne has an in-depth familiarity with both provincial and federal drug reimbursement programs and patient assistant programs. She can help relieve the burden of financial anxiety from our patients by helping them apply for and receive a drug coverage. So please join me in welcoming Yvonne Ta. Thank you, Michelle, and thank you for inviting me to, uh, for this talk. And um, today we're going to cover uh, drug coverage. Uh, well, it's, very, it's going to be very basic about drug coverage 101. And um, the discussion topics today is going to be the introductions about oncology medication and cost, and the medication reimbursement row, which is abbreviated for MRS, which is very lengthy. So, um, and how, how medication coverage works in Ontario, as well as how to reach an MRS, and questions and answers at the very end and closing. I, uh, with all my presentation, I, I love to present the slides, even though it's a bit dated. It's a Canadian Cancer Society, a Cancer Drug Access for Canadians report back in 2009, despite it some years ago. Um, if anything, the numbers would be higher at this point. So about 50% of the newer cancer drugs are taken at home. As a result, the patient needs to pay for the cost of the medication. So anything taken at home would be the patient's responsibility to pay. About three quarters of cancer drugs taken at home cost about $20,000 per year. Unfortunately, this is definitely an underestimate at this, at this point. And the average cost of a single course of treatment uh, for more recent drug costs is about $65,000 per year. And um, that's almost as high as an average annual income of Canadians. And I mean, I myself is nowhere at that point. So, And um, so the Evolve, uh, as Michelle mentioned, um, this role started back in 2010. And so it started as a proof to concept pilot project. Um, at that time, we are outpatient pharmacy. There was a manager at that time where they, uh, where she saw the need um, for uh, getting treatments for cancer med or, or coverage for cancer medication. She actually had a patient coming to her asking her, "Do I live to live or do I live?" And that's when this role has been. Uh, th that's where the inception of this role came up at that time. So it started with one people, and now we, we grow to a team of five. And um, so the, now the role of the medication reimbursement specialist, if you want to take a look at the circle of care, um, patients get seen by doctors, and then uh, the nurses as well, social workers, and then pharmacists, and then um, we get involved in, in uh, getting treatments in place and uh, finding financial assistance. And um, it depends on the, the sites, it depends on the, uh, the doctors as well as the nurses. Uh, sometimes we get referral at the immediate, when, uh, when doctors are seen, we get a call from the clinics, and then to see the patient immediately. Sometimes we may not see the patients until patients are at outpatient pharmacy, and then realizing that the cost of the medication is not affordable or the drug is not covered by their plan. A lot of time when patients tell uh, physicians that I have a drug, I have private insurance, it doesn't end there. So it really means uh, the, the more we have to go in depth into that question. So private insurance doesn't mean that everything is covered. When you have an OHIP, it doesn't mean that everything is covered as well. So the role of the medication reimbursement specialist, so that way you just have an overview of what we do. So we mainly focus on um, facilitate drug access for oral and take-home medications only. And we assist patients with their insurance navigations and appeals, whether it's through the um, insurance company itself or whether it's through the employer, depending on the comfort level of the, of the, of the patient. Because some patient does not want their, um, their um, health condition to be disclosed to the employer. So it really depends on the level of comfort and the transparency. And so we assist patients with trillion drug program application and expediting approvals for urgent cases. If patients were to fill out the application, and if it's filled out correctly, it would probably take at this time, because they're caught up now with the, uh, with the um, Maximus, which was outsourced by the Ministry of Health, it would probably take about four to six weeks. But if they're behind, it could take anywhere up to three months. If there's missing information, it could take longer. And if uh, the application is deemed urgent, we can have it uh, expedited within... Um, usually 24 to, uh, three to five business days, just to be safe. And so we also assist clinicians with exceptional access program um, submission, which is known as EAP, and, um, and follow-ups as well. And we also assist clinicians with private insurance special authorization forms and also follow-up as well. Um, that process I'll go into detail later. 
And so we also, the most important thing and the uni uniqueness of our, the medication reimbursement specialist at Princess Margaret Center is, um, Cancer Center is because uh, we focus on coverage optimization. So that's very, very important. Uh, what we do is coordination of benefit with private and private or private and provincial. And so we also enroll patients to patient assistance program for either copay, deductible assist, where applicable, bridging, compassion, supply. And the most importantly, we don't look at each case as an individual. We look at, look at each patient as a whole. So if a patient has a maximum where it's, um, so let's say a patient has a maximum uh, for the family, we also consider uh, as a whole, what other medications is your family on if they're covered under this plan? So we don't want to exhaust the insurance um, for, for one patient and then leaving the rest of the family member um, in, in the hole. So um, we also look at that. And we also look at not just oncology medications. So if they're on other maintenance medication, if we exhaust their insurance for oncology medications, what's going to happen to the maintenance medication? So we take that as a whole. We look at, we look at that as a, a full picture. And we, find, and we also find, find coverage for unfunded drugs. And so uh, that's done either through the appeals to the exceptional access program, which we do very frequently, and um, the case-by-case -case review program through the Cancer Care Ontario. So the case-by-case -case review program is the only uh, oral agents that, would, uh, that Cancer Care Ontario take care of. Because con uh, Cancer Care Ontario mainly, um, uh, take care, uh, mainly house uh, IV medication. And so we appeal to private insurance via, via employer escalations, as I mentioned before. Again, it really depends on the comfort level of the patient and um, how big the employee size is. If it's a small employee, uh, a small company, uh, how does it affect the premium of the whole company? If it's a big employee, it's a bit more saturated, then the impact is not as big. So we have to really take a, um, this, this um, case, look at it as a whole. Currently, I have a case right now. And it's a small company, but however, uh, to get that medication covered, it wasn't covered and through appeals, it wasn't covered. But because it's an open access plan, I can, get, I can work with the employer and get it, get it covered. But with that being covered, it would increase the premium for the whole company. The company is less than 30 people. So once the premium goes up, as we all know with insurance company, it's not going to go, to go down the following year. So it's, it's, it's going to be stay, it'll stay at that level. So we have to cons put that in consideration as well. And... Um, if all fails, then we go to the pharma and ask for compassionate medications. It's, it, it depends on pharma, depends on, on the clinical situation, depends on the patient's financial situation. And so our role, there, our role here is just to exhaust all avenues of coverage. So what coverage is available to me if, um, this is from a patient's perspective, via private coverage and provincial coverage? And private insurance. So private insurance can be employee-sponsored or self-purchased. So for an employee-sponsored plan, I mean, if we are, let's say we're, we, we both have uh, people, I mean, the guests that are sitting here today, we may all have Sun Life plan. But my coverage and your coverage may differ depending on what plan we choose. So um, we tell patients all the time, the prescriber all the time, um, coverage varies from individual to individual, insurance to insurance. So we don't have a generalized answer. If a patient comes to me and say, I have a Sun Life plan, can you tell me my coverage? I mean, it really depends. We can both have, like I mentioned, we can both have the same plan, but the coverage may, may be very different. And if it's a self-purchase plan, usually they're either a self-employed or they have a small company. The plans are usually very limited. And access to private insurance um, does not always mean adequate drug coverage. That's very, very important. So that's where the stumble block is. Usually when the physician asks, do you have private insurance? Yes, I do. And it ends there. And they'll, they'll prescribe. But it goes actually beyond there. The question that we need to know is, with majority of the oncology medications right now, I can safely tell you 99% of the medications for insurance uh, will require what's called special authorization, except for if you're a federal employee, which is a PSHCP plan. That's a plan that will cover anything and everything um, so far until the further changes. Um, so um, with, uh, we have to make sure that there is there a special authorization required. If it is, does the patient meet criteria? Is this, is this insurance an open access plan? Is it a formulary-based plan? So those are the things that we look into. The percentage of covered, uh, coverage, is it 80%, is it 90 is it 100 I mean, I've seen as, as low as a 20% plan where the, page, the plan pays 20 the patients pay 80 And that's quite common now. I've seen about uh, two or three already so far. And an annual lifetime maximum. So that's very, very important. If we're talking about medication that costs, I mean, $10,000 a month for, to, um, to go to the extreme, um, that's 120 k a year. If insurance has a $10,000 max, it's, it's pretty much considered useless at this point. Uh, so um, even with insurance, 
some patient may forego treatments because they cannot uh, afford the out-of-pocket expense. So just make sure it doesn't end at I have a private insurance. It goes beyond that. And provincial coverage. So um, provincial coverage is known as Ontario Drug Benefit in Ontario. So it's abbreviated for ODB. Um, so you hear a lot of that abbreviation ODB. So just make sure it's not the same as OHIP. It doesn't mean that I have an OHIP, I will have ODB coverage. It's completely different. But you need an OHIP to obtain an ODB coverage. Um, ODB coverage uh, provides coverage for oral and take-home medications, so no IVs with the ODB coverage. And so co coverage is subjected to the list on the Ontario Drug Bene uh, Benefit Formulary, which is a provincial Ontario Drug Benefit Formulary. So again, even if you have ODB, not everything is covered. Um, so many cancer medication potentially funded will require what's called an exceptional access program, which is formally known as Section 8, Section 16, ICR, and now it's, um, it's called EAP. So if someone's using the term Section 8, it dates their time. Um, so approvals are limited and to disease-specific criteria. So uh, you have to meet the criteria as well as uh, when it's approved. It's approved for a duration of period. It's not ongoing. And, um, unless, and, and we can always reapply again as long as the patient shows a positive response. Response um, takes about two to three weeks, depends on the medication, depends on how busy the EAP Ministry of, of uh, Health Office is, and uh, sometimes it could take months. So it really depends on the medication, depends on how urgent it is. But if we know a case is urgent, we'll get, it, we'll get a, a response quite promptly. So I just want to show, because um, a lot of time I get patients coming into me, I'm, I'm over 65, but this drug is not covered. Can I apply for trillium? That's a very, very typical case that we have all the time. So I just want to give you a visual of what ODB is. So think of it as an umbrella. So ODB is a very, very top. It's Ontario Drug Benefit. And on the bottom of the umbrella, these, are, these all belong to ODB. So if you're senior, if you're 65 and over, you'll be, uh, you'll be automatically enrolled into the senior's plan. And that will roll in. So let's say I turn 65 today, February 23rd. My coverage actually won't kick in until March the 1st. So it's always the following month of the first day. So my coverage actually don't kick in at March the 1st. Or sometimes with, if a patient needs to get treatment within this period of time, we might have to apply for Trillium to, to tie them over if there's no other insurance. And if a patient's receiving ODSP, which is Ontario Disability, so sometimes your patient may tell you, I'm on disability. The key question is, are you on Ontario Disability or are you on Canadian Disability? If you're on Ontario Disability, you get a monthly drug card. But if you're on Canadian Disability, you don't get any drug card at all. And Ontario Works, which is formerly known as Welfare. So that's, um, that's Ontario Works. And um, if patients are receiving home care service, um, uh, sometimes, not all the time, depends on the lens and depends on the budget uh, availability, um, we may be able to access a home care drug card. So we always tell patients that's a bandage solution because when your home care ends, your coverage ends. So on the home care drug card, it has an estimated end date. Um, with the estimate and end date, it could be later, it could be before. It, again, it depends on the service end. So we, ne we don't like to use that as a permanent solution. It could be a bandage solution to get them onto medication. And then we, we apply for what's a permanent solution, which is Trillium drug program, if they have insufficient private insurance or no private insurance. So just remember, again, the take-home message is ODB, Ontario Drug Benefit. It's, this it falls under all this umbrella. So if you're already a senior, there's no point with uh, applying for Trillium because the coverage is exactly the same. It's just a deductible that's different, varies from programs to programs. And there's one that's long-term care, which we don't really have any of, of, of our patients here. This is a drug card that's presented for long-term care uh, patients who are residing in a long-term care home, but they have designated pharmacy that fills for them. And then just a bit in depth about uh, ODB. So just to uh, mention too, so patients who are 65 and over will have ODB. They don't need to apply. It will automatically be applied to them comes the, first, uh, comes, uh, the following month of the first day. And um, if you consider low-income senior, which is 16000 per individual or 24000 per household, you need to apply to have that $100 waived. So a deductible for a, a senior is um, $100 every year, August the 1st. So if they're considered low-income, it doesn't automatically place them into a low-income bracket. They have to put in the paperwork and apply and put in their, uh, their notice of assessment to prove their income. And uh, if you're high income, everyone is considered high income, let's put it this way, um, unless you're deem, you deem yourself low income with a proof of income, with a with notice of assessment. And patient on uh, social, uh, social assistance, which is Ontario Works, 
uh, gets a monthly drug card, and they have to present the monthly drug card every month to the pharmacy to fill the medications. Uh, patient receiving home care service, as we mentioned, and pa patient who reside in long-term care home and patient on trillium drug program. And um, so with the senior plans, $100 every year, and then um, with, the, uh, with the deductible, it's either $4.11 or it's $2.00. And uh, with, uh, when they fill it outside pharmacy, and with the hospital, it's a bit different. So it's either $2 or there's no charge. And uh, with the social assistance, there's no charge. It's $2. The majority of pharmacy waives that $2 anyways. At least the pharmacy downstairs does. Um, patient receiving home care is the same thing, $2, or it's, it's being waived depending on the pharmacy. Trillium is a bit different. So let's go into that one. And so with Trillium drug programs for patients with no ins private insurance or insufficient private insurance and has high out-of-pocket prescription costs. So as long as patients, so we get a lot of uh, these questions uh, or these statements uh, coming from either prescribers or from nurses, from social workers, uh, actually, sorry, take that back, not from social workers, uh, but from uh, patients themselves as well, saying that, oh, I don't qualify for Trillium. I make too much to qualify. So that's, not the, that's never the case. As long as you are an Ontario resident, you have a valid OHIP card that is active, and um, you, you are able to provide income for previous tax year. If you haven't filed taxes, there's other ways of, a T4 would, be, would also be sufficient, or you can get a, a lawyer's or accountant to prove your income. That would be sufficient as well. So these are just the three criteria that you need to meet in order to qualify for Trillium. So if your patient tells you that, you know, I, or um, tells you that I don't qualify for Trillium, just ask that three questions. Do you have all those three? If you do, then you qualify. The only difference that would make my application different from your application is our income. So there is a deductible, which is calculated based on approximately 3 to 4% of the combined household net income. So when you apply for Trillium, it's a household net income. So for example, for myself, if I were to apply for Trillium, I would have to include my husband, which because the spouse is always deemed dependent regardless, unless um, you're not married or, yeah. So um, it's always deemed dependent, and my children were always deemed dependent. So they would have to be included on my, my, my uh, application. Unless my children is financially independent of me and over 18, then I can exclude them from the application. Um, so that's, uh, so the, it's always a household application. So bear in mind, Trillium Drug Program is a bit different. The policy year doesn't run calendar year. It starts August the 1st of every year. So the Trillium started uh, for this year, it started August the 1st of 2015. And it's going to end on July 31st, 2016. So usually at the end of the uh, July 31st comes August 1st, when patient who hasn't renewed a Trillium, that's when pharmacy will find out. Because when they put through the medication, it's not going through. So we have to make sure, we always uh, emphasize to our patients that make sure that you file taxes on time, so that way when they go into CRA, they have your income, and they can renew your application. Um, deductibles are paid in quarterly, so it's roughly about 1% every quarter. And any un unpaid deductibles gets accumulate, accumulate, accumulated quarterly within the TDP or Trillium Drug Program policy years. So let's say for quarter one I haven't paid my deductible, it does get carried forward to next quarter, and next quarter, and next quarter. And uh, whatever is not paid comes a new Trillium year, it goes back to zero. And so not to worry, so some patient will ask me, will, will I be issued a bill to pay my deductible? It won't happen. So sort of pay-as-you-go plan, think of it that way. And deductibles are paid when purchasing medication at the pharmacy with your health card. So you have to let your, uh, your pharmacy know that you have Trillium and you can use your health card to pay. I mean, the health card to, uh, goes through with Trillium to be billed. So this is just an example. So let's say, for example, um, this is a grid, so you can have an idea of what it is. So let's say, uh, for example, um, my, my income is here, my household income is here, and I have a family of four, per se. So roughly your deductible will be divided by four within this amount. Um, so, and within this amount that your deductible is quarterly. Once you fulfill your quarterly deductible within the quarter, and from that day on to the end of quarter, as long as the medication is covered by Trillium, then you don't have to pay anything, regardless of how much, how much or how costly the medication is. But just have to make sure that the, the deductible that they're fulfilling are for medications that are covered. So let's say if I have a medication that's not covered by Trillium and I can't get it covered, if I pay for that, that would not be counted towards my deductible. So it has to be medications that are covered. And so the very first time we put this application, that's why we always highly, highly recommend that when the patient do, does a Trillium application, either go to, go to a medication reimbursement specialist or social worker, because um, th the very first time when you do an application, you can pick any start date within that range, August the 1st to, to the following year, July 31st. Uh, the reason why it's important to pick a good start date or a, um, a preferred start date is because your deductible gets prorated. So a lot of time when the application goes in without a start date, it's by default, it's going to say August the 1st. So you, let's say if I put in an application and I put it in August the 1st, not knowing 
then my deductible is going to be, even though I'm starting treatment now, I'm still incurring a deductible from August the 1st till now, which we're in quarter three already. So just make sure that it's, it's very, very important with the start date. And it's only the first time when you put, this, put in a Trillium application can you pick a start date. Subsequent renewals are always based on, it will always be August the 1st of that year, Trillium year. And um, the other things that we, I uh, mean, with oncology medication, the, 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 the cost of the medication, a lot of the medication now do have what's called patient assistance program. It depends on the medication, financial income of the patients, indication of use, whether it's on-label, off-label. Uh, patient assistance program may be able to help with the private insurance copay, uh, the Trillium deductible assistance. It really depends on the uh, program, depends on your drug. So it's not for all medications. And sometimes they may, they may be able to provide bridging. What that means is, let's say if a patient needs to start medication today, but the people that's required, it's quite lengthy. So we may be able to go into the, uh, the patient assistance program and ask them to bridge until we get coverage. So that, that could be possible. And where there's everything else fails, there's no coverage, there's no means, there could be compassionate supply. It, again, it varies. And um, not all programs has that and not all medications has that. And so this is just a uh, outpatient, oh, sorry, this is just a drug coverage at a glance. So just to let you see how this actually works, I know it looks a bit complicated, but that's what we do in and out every day. So uh, drug coverage right here, private, is it general benefit, is it special authorization? It actually goes into much more detail than what we can see, what we put on this, this chart here. But if we do go into nitty gritty, it'll be like a four page charge, chart. So, um, and the other thing really to bear in mind, this is very, very, very crucial right now because of the cost of medication. Does this plan allow online billing? Meaning that the pharmacy can, can charge over the card, the pharmacy can charge the card and bill the card directly. Or is this a plan that needs to be paid and submit? Meaning the patient has to fork out $10,000 every month and then wait for the insurance company to come back in a month or two to reimburse them. So th these are things that we're, we're, it's more and more, it's becoming more and more important that we have to pay attention to. And then if they don't have private insurance or insufficient private insurance, um, we can enroll them into Ontario Drug Benefit Program. If they're a senior right here, they're already enrolled. Again, comes the following month, the first day of their birthday. If they're not a senior, do they fit under any of these criteria? So these are the things that we look at. And um, so this is just an overview of uh, drug coverage. And we understand that this, is very this may get very complicated for patients, so that's why we're here. And um, how a medication reimbursement or MRS can help you. So we assist, again, we mentioned, assist patients with navigating through private insurance and appeal. So sometimes um, we have had patients that actually got referred and said, we don't have any private insurance. And through talking to them, we realized, oh, even though they're on disability, the, their insurance may continue. So we found quite a few of those cases where even though they're on, on, on disability, the insurance continue, and they've been paying into premium without knowing. So we have to make sure we, we investigate. And um, with also the PSHCP plan, the federal plan, retired plans, um, if the spouse will always be covered, even though the, the plan member may have disease, the spouse member will always be covered. So that's another thing that we also found out for some of the patients as well. So we need to look into the insurance in detail. And um, assist patient with trillium drug application. So I can't stress enough the importance of at, the, at least initial time to have a medication reimbursement specialist or social worker to go through the application with the patient to make sure that everything that needs to be on there is on there and anything that does not need to be on there is not on there. Because once it's submitted to appeal, it's very, very difficult. And then we also assist clinicians with special, special authorization through the private insurance and also exceptional access program. And we also assist with the follow-up. Um, because there, there might be some, some physicians that will prefer to do, the, to do it on their own. And so uh, this patient with the patient assistant program enrollment and, and to make sure that everything is coordinated. And again, the key is coverage optimization. It's not just about getting coverage now, it's about coverage optimization. Um, the reason why I really, really focus on this is, I remember when I started um, on this program that was back in 2010, I had a patient where they had ten thousand uh, uh, dollars. They had one thousand dollars. Sorry, it's a family. Uh, it's a family maximum. He's very young, and he was prescribed a medication that's cost about seven thousand dollars. So the doctor uh, wanted him to start even for a week to see how he's fine, and we'll go from there. But he decided not to take medication because he wanted to save that thousand dollars for his family because he had a young, a very young born child who was about six months at that time. And unfortunately, he, he, he passed away. So from that point on, I realized how important it is to not just think about an individual, patient as an individual, but the family as a whole. So that's very, very important. 
And um, it started with one person right here. This is me right here. And so uh, we came with Diane. But Diane went on mat leave just before we could take her picture. So we put a baby picture here. Um, and um, Shirley's just, we got the picture right before she went on mat leave. And so this is Shirley, our third MRS. And our both beautiful ladies now is at, on mat leave and during their uh, motherhood. And uh, now we have Marianne, who joined our team uh, last year. And also Charlene Lord. So we're all here to help you. Our general phone number is right here, 2830, which is a triage line. And then so this is our general email, which gets to all of the MRS. And we encourage you to use this email. And this is your fax number. And um, the other thing that we really want to talk about is um, it really makes our, our job a lot easier when patients are filling the medication at outpatient pharmacy because we work direct, directly with the outpatient pharmacy to ensure that patient can get access to medication immediately. Because if there's any billing issues, if there's any, because we can see their system, we can fix it immediately or fix it even within, a, uh, within an allowable period of time. Um, they're located on the main floor. It's next to the blood lab. And so the pharmacists there are specialized in oncology medications. And there's private counseling units um, right here. We can see right there. Um, and the oncology medications are readily available at this pharmacy. This is very important because we've had a lot of pharmacy. Even we had a recent one where there are staff at a, uh, at, a, at a pharmacy, but the pharmacy refused to dispense it to the staff because first they don't want to break, the, break open the, the bottle. And the second thing is this chemo medication. They don't want to put their staff at risk. So um, we, we have the facility here to facilitate, facilitate that. And there's independent double, uh, double checking system. And um, all proceeds goes back to the hospital. And the last thing is the complimentary next day delivery. Recognizing that because the, the pharmacy service, the whole center, it may take some time. So they do offer next day complimentary deliveries. And they're open Monday to Friday from 9 to 5.30, but close on the weekends. And we are located on the fourth floor, room 104. So this is how you can find us. It's a bit confusing. So if you get out of the fourth floor elevator, follow the medication reimbursement sign, go through the gray doors, and then go straight down the hallway, mm -hmm. past the washrooms, then you'll see our office right on the right-hand side. I say this every day, that's why. Um, so our office is a bit hidden, but you'll find us. And the key message, if you haven't done anything today, is just remember, delay in coverage is ego delay in treatment. So if... In any doubt, if you want, if your patient needs to start or, or starting uh, chemo, or you don't know what medication they are, feel free to uh, to refer them to us, and we'll look into coverage for you. And even if it's a general general coverage without a specific medication, we can also do that as well. So, in order to prevent delays, drug coverage should be explored during initial visit. Um, and so well, I've explained to that already. Our phone number and uh, messages will be addressed within seventy two hours, and that's it. Mm -hmm.